Hey guys, real quick, I want to share a little bit uh, from the scriptures about my thoughts and uh, what's going on uh, in, the, in, these, in these states where all these riots and protests are going, some a little bit around the world as well. Uh, not that my opinion matters because everybody's got one, you know, you're hearing it all over social media and stuff too, but this is just, I feel like, you know, some things have been said on social media and on the news. Uh, just just really cuts to my spirit and I, I believe it grieves the Lord and I'm gonna share some some things with you uh, uh, if I get pretty wound up and excited I'm sorry but uh, well, I know I'm not sorry because uh, I, f I feel like uh, some of the stuff needs to be said and uh, it's called righteous indignation what's happened in our country uh, uh, what we're being told what's happened in our country is not so we're, uh, there's a lot of lies and uh, misinformation going on because um, I want to share that with you but first of all I want to I want to say number one uh, we do need police officers okay uh, without police officers there's no law um, we uh, I want to thank the police officers for what they do I, I know there's corrupt police officers out there I've dealt with many corrupt police officers but that doesn't mean every police officer is corrupt okay um, so <clears throat> with that said I mean we've done uh, I've done a lot of street ministry and I've ran into a lot of uh, cops that are just jerks they don't even know the law but but there are a lot of other cops that have been real real uh, 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 kind to us and stuff like that so uh, I want to first of all say thank you to the police officers uh, Please, folks, don't be hating on the police officers because you know what? If there's no law enforcement, you know, then it's okay for people to just break into your house and rob you. Okay? There's nobody to call, you know, when, when you're in trouble. Okay? You know, what I'm saying? For, for extra help. So if you're a you're a single mom or, or elderly person and you need somebody to come and help you, if, there, if there's no cops around, then then then, then there's no order. Okay? So, um, you know, as long as they're staying within the law, they're within the law. So. Um, so let me let me say real quick about the protesters. Uh, thank God we have a First Amendment right. We can protest. I can stand on the street corner. I can preach the gospel, and uh, and it's called the freedom of speech. Protesters, go do it. Good for you. Good. Um, if you're if you're trying to make make a change, maybe you need to be protesting about something else besides belly aching and whining, compl whining and complain and tell police officers to, to change what they're doing. Okay, they're doing the best job as they can. Okay. Police officers do the best job that they can do. You know, we know that there's some bad apples in there, but you know what? They're doing the best job they can do. If you really want to make a difference, stop asking people to bow the knee to you, okay? If you're a protester and a rioter and a, burning down buildings and, and murdering people in the streets of the human race, say I'm not talking about black and whites and yellows and purples and greens. I'm talking about the human race. There's one race. Okay? Just like there's one God, okay? And his name is Jesus Christ. Okay? So there's one race of people, and God created every one of us in his image, that his image did he create all of us. So let me get that straight real quick. God created the human being race in his image. And the scripture says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made by God. Okay? We need to respect that. You know, yeah, we need to love our neighbor, but you know what? If you're protesting or you're just getting on Facebook just to blah, 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 you know, you know, we need to be preaching the gospel, okay? Yeah, it's okay to expo expose some lies that's going on. There's a lot of lies going on, okay? there's They're not telling us the full truth on everything, okay? But let me tell you some truth. Jesus said in the gospel of John chapter 17, verse 17, he says, My word is truth. And John 8 says that my truth will set, God's word, His the truth will set you free. You guys need to be set free if you're protesting and burning down buildings and you want to make a real change. If you want to make real change, Let's, let, let's read about that. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5 and 17, many of you have heard this before, but maybe I'm just give you a little refresher, okay? I'm refreshing you up on, on, your, on your memory real quick. It says here, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. If you're in Christ, if you're in Christ, condition, if you're in Christ, you're a new creature. And it says, old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. See, 
We need to be made new. That's what we need to be made. We don't need to be making New Year's resolution, trying to change our life around. Jesus didn't come so you can try better and do it yourself. You know, we don't need to be doing a Home Depot deal, do it in yourself. You can't fix yourself. You can't clean up your own life. That's why That's why you're, most, most people's lives are just, they're just terrible and falling apart because Jesus has not made them new yet. Guys, let's, let's, let's think about this. You've tried so hard to fix things in your life and you can't. You got to go to Jesus Christ and say, Jesus, change me. I need to be changed. I need to be made new. I want the old things gone. And guess what happens when the old things are gone? It says, Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God. What? All things are of God. The human race is of God. All things are of God and hath reconciled us. Jesus has recon God has recon reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given us the ministry of reconciliation. Well, the ministry of reconciliation, how did, Jesus, how did God reconcile us? Through Jesus Christ on the cross. Jesus Christ was brutally tied to a whipping post and hit 39 times with a whip where his flesh was ripped off, with his skin was ripped off of his body. He had to carry, carry, carry a cross to Calvary, and then they and then they ripped his clothes off completely naked, spit at him, punched him, ripped his beard, put nails in his hands and feet, put a crown of thorns on him, and he died for your sin. You're lying, you're coveting, you're stealing, you're adultery, you're you're bowing down the statues, you're idolatry, you're disobedient to your parents. Jesus Christ died for that. The crap that you guys are doing on the streets out there, burning down buildings, you guys belly aching about cops and stuff like that. Guys, get a grip. Get the Bible. Get off Facebook, get in the Bible. I try to keep a pretty balanced life, you know? I try to read my Bible and, and do those things. I thought I'd do it perfect. But you know what? I got some truth here. And that's why America is losing this truth. Because we're believing all this garbage. You know what? I'll tell you what matters. You know, people want to say black lives matter, you know, cops matter, you know, blah, 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 all, all this matter. Who gives a flying rip? I'll tell you what matters. Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross matters. Jesus being brutally murdered. Ain't nobody burning no buildings down for that, are they? Nobody, Nobody's, uh, you know, stealing, ripping off, ripping off a, a Best Buy or a Target because Jesus Christ, that matters. Jesus' life mattered. You know, the scripture says in, Gal in the book of Galatians, it says, I have been, Paul said this, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life in which I, and now which I live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That matters. That life matters. Because, because that one life that Jesus gave, will save every one of us wicked human beings. If you want to preach something on the streets and go outside with your little signs and blah, 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 with your little mask on, if you want to do all that stuff, why don't you go out and start preaching the gospel, the gospel of reconciliation to Jesus Christ and His Word. You guys are just mar marching around being, being, being crazy about things. Guys, be crazy about Jesus Christ. I'll tell you this, if you're asking people to bow the knee to you, then you've never bowed your knee to Jesus Christ. And let me go to the other side. If you're bowing your knee to another human being, you've never, you've never been reconciled to God, and you're not a believer in Jesus Christ. You may believe here, but you're here. You're gonna mess. You, you're gonna you're gonna split hell right, wide open by eight by eighteen inches, miss, 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 uh, missing heaven by eighteen inches. You're not gonna get to heaven because you have. You, you have not repented and put your faith in Jesus Christ and live your life in obedience as a follower and a disciple. The Bible says that he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me, Jesus said. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. If you love Jesus Christ, you'll obey him. You'll bow the knee to Jesus Christ. I'll tell you this, you're all going to bow the knee to one day. You're all going to bow the knee one day. And let me let me I'm explain something in in uh, in Philippians chapter two in verse ten. I'm gonna read this to you. Listen, guys, 
I'll start in verse 9. It says, Therefore God hath highly exalted him, Jesus, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow uh, things that are in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth, every and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my brethren, as ye have uh, always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh and doeth in in both you to do for to, to do and to will for his good pleasure. You're gonna bow the knee to one day. We don't mean bowing no bowing no knee. You know what? You football players, stop to stop just stand there. If you, if, you, if you don't know if you don't like the country, you don't like all this stuff, just stand there. You don't have to make some some silly statement by taking a knee. Just save your knees. Save your knees for Jesus Christ because you're gonna you're gonna bow it one day. You're going to bow the knee to Jesus one day. Okay? Save your energy and stop bowing to other things and start bowing your knee to Jesus. If you want to get on your knees, go to get on your knees and pray. Okay? Don't don't put on a show out there in front of with people with their little cameras out in, in front of police officers and demanding police officers to bow to you. Guys, we got we we've got to get back to the Bible. This is what's so missing, and no one's even mentioning this. These so-called reverend activists are are, are 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 misrepresenting what this book is saying. You know, I've listened. I've listened to these little sermons that they're, that they're saying. You know, they twist scripture like twisted sister, man. I mean, it's, it's like it's like the it's even like that little game twister. Everybody's, it's not even the truth. Jesus' word will is life and is truth. There's no other way. To the Father, but through Jesus. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but through me, Jesus said. Now, some of you guys may be like, oh, I don't agree with you, Steve. Blah, blah, blah. Well, delete me. Remove remove me from faith. If you don't agree with the Bible, if you're getting upset at me, if you get upset at what I'm saying right now, if, then you're getting mad at God. You're not mad at me. You're mad at Jesus Christ, and you hate Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'm wound up. You know what? Can you imagine... How Jesus felt when he walked into the temple and they're selling, they're selling goods at the temple, a place of prayer and worship, and they're making money for themselves at the temple. And he grabs a whip and he begins to, I mean, throw a fit, throwing table over. Jesus was indignant. He was angry toward the sin that was going on there. John the Baptist, he rebuked people for their wickedness. Jesus said to the Pharisees, you, you are like whitewashed tombs full of dead men bones. You're pretty on the outside, but you're wicked and filthy on the inside. Jesus, Jesus was not a, he, he was not a nice guy. Jesus was a compassionate guy. Jesus was compassionate. And Jesus loved people, but Jesus was not a doormat. He was austere, the King James says. Austere means he was stern and he was he was tough. He was no Mamby Pammy Snowflake, guys. He was. He wasn't. He wasn't. Because I tell you what, the things that the, the thing the things he went through in his life, none of us could have endured that. But Jesus did. He tried to he told he told the Father in the Garden of Gethsemane, if, it, 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 if it's possible, take this cup away from me. And he, he, he sweated great drops of blood. Man, he, but you know what? He says, not my will, but your will be done. Jesus took the punishment for your sin and mine. Okay, we need to bow to knee to Jesus Christ. Stop bowing to knee to other things. Bow to knee to Jesus Christ. You know what? We need to be preaching a reconciliation message. Not that we all become friends again. And we all come to agreement. We all need to be preaching a reconciliation, not not a horizontal reconciliation. We need a vertical reconciliation with God. And when we have a vertical reconciliation of the nation to God, then our relationship with one another connects together again. Guys, it's not a religious trip, it's a relationship. We need to we we need this first. We need a relationship with God. 
through repentance, and then this happens. Horizontal reconciliation. So guys, think about this. If you, I mean, sorry guys, if you, don't, if you guys don't agree with this, that's fine. I don't expect you all to, to agree. I didn't make this to, to make friends. Somebody send me an email, say, oh, I love it. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, here's a plaque, Stephen. That's a wonderful thing. I, I, I didn't make that for a reason. I, I want to make it clear we need a different message than what's being preached from the politicians, that's being preached from these protesters. Look, I'm not a protester. I'm a preacher. You know what? Let, let, let's change the thing. You guys that are protesting, stop it. Be preachers. Be a preacher. Be a preacher of this book, not a protester. You understand? So God bless you guys. I hope you guys have a great way. You guys stay in the Word, stay in prayer, and stay godly. God bless you guys.